unwilling to sleep. All right, let's just start over here. So, hardwired, um, you control a team of four agents. The agents are specialists, illegal black ops uh, troops carrying out uh, black ops missions for evil cyberpunk corporations. One of the key elements of uh, Hardwired is that each agent has a special uh, a type, but they can all do all kinds of actions. So these guys are the type called Ronin. They are uh, ranged weapon specialists, so they are better at using ranged attacks, uh, better at defending when being shot at, but even though they are that, they can still hack enemy robots, uh, interact with the computers, uh, uh, hijack electronics, they can heal their, uh, their friends. So they can all do all those things. This guy, the red guy here, he's, a, he's called Spotless. He's a support specialist. So he's a better at using support skills, but he can still uh, fire weapons and toss grenades. And this uh, last guy here, Conduit, he's my, uh, he's my, I think he's called a splicer. See here. Yeah, he's a splicer, and that's the hacker in, uh, in the game. And he's still good with a gun, and he's still a combat specialist, but he's even better at hacking. All your agents have three actions uh, in their turn. If you're playing co-op, you just choose the best way forward with your characters um, so so it doesn't have to be the same uh, the same turn each, each round so so one round uh, spotless uh, could go first and the next round uh, gator could choose to go first whatever we think is the best uh, tactical choice at the beginning of the game each of the agents will have three actions a, uh, an action done with a d6, an action done with a d8, and an action done with a uh, d10. All actions succeed on a 4+. plus. So uh, using the d6, you'll have a 50% chance of success and much higher with the, uh, with the d10. All actions can be used with all dice, but you want to use your d10 action on the crucial ones and perhaps use the d6 for their for the not so, not so important actions so three actions each turn they each get one free move action say i want to move again i have to uh, get a success for a move action is it important for me to move uh, maybe not so i roll my d6 if it's below four it's failed he can't make a move Okay, so I have to stay in place, but it's pretty important for me to hit uh, the enemy. So my next action, I'll try to use my D10 uh, to get the 4 plus to hit my enemy. And this is where the uh, speciality comes into play. Say you uh, use a, uh, a Ronin. Uh, these two are Ronin. They're good at ranged actions. So if they choose to use an action... Uh, for range fire, they get to use two dice. They can only score one success, but they have double the chance of scoring it. Same if they are shot at, they'll be able to roll two dice, hoping for a fall plus to uh, succeed their defense. The splicer, hacker specialist, any kind of action he does that's about hacking stuff, he'll roll two dice, hoping for a success. Uh, for his shooting action, he'll only roll one dice. My, uh, oh, that was my hacker. Uh, my three actions per turn. Um, four plus for a success. You can fail the, uh, the rolls. Then you might have a very bad round where you fail all your rolls, despite your uh, specialty giving uh, two dice of the same type. Or they can get off three actions. So that's really going to cause some mayhem. You have no idea how much you are able to move across the board or how many hits you are able to score on the enemy. Um, 
As I mentioned before, all characters can do uh, all kinds of actions. And in this game, they're called CAPS, which is Combat Application Protocols. Uh, you have to make a success reaction to use them, and that could be like a hacking action, uh, hijacking an enemy bot, uh, activating a target system so you are able to hit better on the next action where you shoot, get some extra movement for the, some adrenaline boosts, overwatch actions, uh, healing other characters, and, uh, and the like. That, uh, that takes an action. And some of these caps, if you're a Ronin, you'll be better at the combat caps. If you're a support, uh, a Sawbones, you'll be better at uh, the supporting caps. Okay. Next up is the enemies. So in Hardwired, you'll be fighting what's known as hostile security. And hostile security are the, the bad guys from the local security forces or enemy uh, corporate security and they come in three different types and this is a swarm game so for each round uh, more enemies will come for the first two rounds in the game it's the uh, d6 type enemies these are super easy low level render cops you know they just want to make a few bucks and get home they're not good soldiers uh, so I've modeled up these guys, you know, uh, simple assault rifle, caps, uh, almost no armor. These are from Star Saga. And these guys have one action and they have to uh, roll a d6 die to get a success. So they won't move very far. They won't hit you. Uh, they're not that dangerous. The second type of uh, enemies, they'll enter the board from turn three. They are DH enemies. Uh, these guys, they will roll a D8 for all their actions. They have two actions. So double up on actions, and they roll a D8 on both of them. They'll have a much better chance of hitting you, and they can make some fire and maneuver from the two actions. So these models are, are done with some bigger drones, uh, some androids, a big robot, and uh, armored marines, SWAT types. And at the final two turns of the game, you will be fighting uh, the D10 guys. These are the top Black Ops nasty soldiers, uh, fully armored, heavy gear. They roll a D10 and they have three actions. So these guys, when they start firing at you, they will have as many actions as your own agents, but they will roll a better dice for, for two of those actions. Uh, they are nasty. They also roll a d10 in defense. The other guys roll a d8 in defense. And the first guys roll a d6 in defense. So they are also extremely hard to kill. Uh, I forget to mention earlier that, that your own agents are always, unless using some kind of a cap, you know, those combat applications, they are rolling a d6 in defense. So they are light armored compared to the, uh, to the hostile security. Okay, I think it's time to show off the board. So Hardwired is played on a 3x3 or 4x4 board. This is the board uh, we're using today. Um, in all missions, there are going to be four entry points and they are placed randomly at the board edges. So that's entry point one. There should be one on each side over there uh, by the bus stop is entry point two. Over here behind the flying noodle boat is entry point three. And then I rolled up a fourth one over there by the cab boat. That's entry point four. And at the end of each round, you roll a 2d4, and that decides from where the hostile security will come this turn. So if you're lucky, and my objective is over here somewhere, and I roll lucky on the hostile security phase, and all the enemies spawn there, that's very good for me. If I'm super unlucky, and roll that 
both new strike teams enter where my objective is, for example, it's going to be pretty freaking tough to, uh, to make it out of there. And that's completely random. In the first turn, two enemies will enter the board from two uh, different locations. You have to try and blow them apart because in the second turn, three enemies will enter from two different locations. So by the end of turn two, if you haven't shut up those uh, uh, enemy uh, forces, there'll be 10 guys on the board and you have a combined 12 actions to do with your agents. Then you'll have in turn three, uh, two D8 enemies, turn four, you'll have uh, three D8 enemies from each uh, spawn point. And uh, by the last turn, you'll have these uh, nasties there. Let's just uh, go over a few simple uh, dice rolls here. So. I'm going to take one of my agents, just to show up the techniques. Um, if he was shooting at a d6 enemy, I would say I have, a, this is my first action, so my action pool is still like this. I have a d6, a d10, and a d8 action. There's a shot there. There we go. Um, he's not a nasty enemy. So I'm just going to take the D8 for this one, maybe uh, save the D6 for a move and the D10 for a better shot. I roll two dice because he's a combat specialist, he's a Ronin, hoping for a 4 plus. And there was an 8 and a 2. So that was a successful shot. I can't get two successes, even if I roll like this. It still counts uh, like one success. It's just double the chance to succeed. So uh, this guy is hit. Now he would roll a d6 in defense because he's a d6 enemy, hoping for a four plus, or he'll take a wound. He took a wound. He's dead. Cover is super important in hardwired, and so is obstructions. So if there is an obstruction. Between me and the guy I'm shooting at, I'm going to get a minus two to my dice roll. I still have to roll the four plus. So if I use my d6 action, I roll a four. So that would be a fail. I had to roll a six because of the obstruction. That would mean to five, bring me to four in order to hit him. So those high dice get really important as soon as there are obstructions. Obstructions stack. So if there's one, two obstructions in the way, I get a minus four to my dice roll. I can't hit him with the d6. It's impossible. If he was in light cover, I would have one obstruction, minus two, light cover, minus four, and this guy even gets a better defense. He gets a plus one to his defense. Heavy cover, you get a plus two to your defense. So if you don't find a good line of fire, this guy right now, Gator, he would get a minus two for one obstruction, minus four, minus six for the cover to his dice roll, and he has to get a four plus. So he can only succeed this shot on a 10. There is no automatic success. There's no automatic failure uh, on a 10 and a one. So 10 minus six, that would give him four, and he would still get a hit. And this guy, he will get plus two to his uh, roll. So even though he's uh, using the d6, even if he only rolls a two, he will have saved the wound because it will bring him to four, uh, three and four. So cover is super important. It's the best way to keep your own guys safe. The hostiles work from a super simple AI. Always try to get to cover shoot at the nearest, most wounded enemy, keep shooting at him until he's dead. That's it. Super duper simple. And for a game like this, it works really well because that's the action shot you need to have in your head. Anyways, my agents are moving in. The hostile forces are, are uh, swarming them. They are running into the area, crouching down this time stuff and just start blasting away. 
the trick in the game is that I'm a person, so I'm fairly smart compared to a two-side uh, AI. So I have to use the caps, I have to use my grenades and other stuff to bring even the hard enemies uh, down that are rolling the good dice.